All right. Hey, guys. Welcome to another uh, Near Mint Condition, All Reader, New Reader. I almost forgot what the show was called, so that's where <laughs> I'm at today. Um, <laughs> Gmail says that Omar needs his beer. Well, I, I, was, I, I came prepared. Oh, look at you. Fancy. Or is that a dark beer in a wine glass? I've done the same. <laughs> no. I'm ordering um, beer. So you're ordering Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Where are you living you, that you can do that? <laughs> I'm just going to ask my, my spouse to bring me one. Oh, that's oh, okay. what I do. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> we do that. <laughs> so as you all may notice, we have two new faces here. That is Chris and Steven from the Redo podcast, formerly of the Is This Adulting podcast, sure. uh, which they so graciously allowed me to be on. And, you know, I acted a fool as I, yeah. I assume I promised to do so. So... <laughs> Um, I don't know if you guys wanted to further introduce yourselves before jumping in, but um, I do want to let everybody in the chat know that Chris has never read a comic book before today. So Yes. So in advance, I apologize to you all. I do nothing but respect your craft, uh, and I will do the best I can to honor you well through this. <laughs> <laughs> but he I'm, has I'm, read I've, before. I, I have you know, read books and, and just... <laughs> words in general sure so i mean i'm not like i'm I'm not new to the concept of reading but i am new Ah, to the concept of comic books outside of knowing what they are so and as you can tell from behind me i also have never read a comic book before Um, yeah you collect them like the rest of us yeah yeah yeah, i bought all these like this week because i knew i was coming on i wanted to look cool so there's no better way to show the difference between steven and i from the his background is comics and mine is pretty much just a basic white wall that has nothing else on it so i'm a i'm an open canvas so teach me all your ways today okay fantasy yeah. books yes i have read fantasy books okay. so it, it, it wasn't like completely out of nowhere yeah this definitely is a heavy fantasy book um yeah. so uh, for those of you in the chat we are talking about monstrous today that's the deluxe monstrous um, by marjorie liu you've and got the our- barnes and noble exclusive right Cause I know oh, I've got this? the I got the this, poor people cover the, fa- the fancy one. Yeah, look at Thank you. you. <laughs> it looks better. <laughs> it's it's really nice. Yeah, that is nice. And with uh, art by Sana Takeda. So, man, I uh, panicked before this show uh, for multiple reasons. One, because I gave this book to Chris to read for the sure. first time, and two, mm-hmm. because you know we typically start off with a summary, a quick summary of like what it is that we're talking about, and. Um, there is a lot in this book, so I'm just going to do yeah. the most bland summary I can because I could not at all encapsulate what this book is about for you all at home. <laughs> can you give the same summary that you you kind of gave me while we were talking beforehand? Do you remember what that summary was? Yeah, sure. I don't remember. <laughs> On the spot. <laughs> so um, for those of you who haven't picked it up, which I, um, I think it's been pretty popular, so I know a lot of our viewers have picked up monsters or have owned monstrous. Um, a lot of my friends that aren't even in comics, like the I'm on Facebook with that don't follow this channel, which why they don't, I don't know, have <laughs> monsters at home. So monsters is an East Asian fantasy style of book. Um, and it centers around your main character. Um, oh gosh. Is it Makai? Did I forget her name? Yes. Micah, Micah, Micah half wolf. And she is a half wolf basically. So you uh-huh. have like your human race, Versus like your um, more bestial race that are at odds. And then there's those caught in between like Micah, who is half wolf and half human. And she has some other compatriots around her that are similar. Um, And this is all East Asian base. So versus like uh, typical fantasies you see, which are very like Western and elves and druids and D&D races. Um, This is a very kind of different, more like avatar the last airbender sort of that kind of eastern um inspiration but i think goes way harder (laughs) on that um and she is trying to figure out about her past and also learn about this monster that lives inside of her so she's got some sort of old god inside of her that you know eats things against her will um and she's just trying to figure that out and that is the plainest summary I can give, because if we did a play-by-play, it, we would be here for three hours. Yeah. So. Seriously. It's um, it's a lot. This is my second read-through. Like, and I have a, 
Well, you know what? I'm going to let our guests talk. You guys, uh, you guys go first. What did you? Oh Jesus, Chris! I don't, I don't even know what to ask you. What did you think of pictures? What did sure. you think of? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, for the most part, I mean, the first thing I, I talked to Stephen about this. Um, mm-hmm. I actually felt, found it very enjoyable. Like, I mean, it was, it was considering what it was. I felt like I basically understood it. Like the the thing that really threw me off at first, and I mean, this is probably just because of it being a more complicated book. I tried to describe it to my wife and uh, I said, uh, I said, I kind of feel like with this being my first one, it's I'm just learning to read and uh, someone gave me war and peace and I'm trying to like, you know, just consume all this at once. But, um, uh, but I think that once I was able to get into it, the first like chapter chapter, is that the correct words? I apologize. Um, Sure. Yeah. uh, in this book, they're chapters. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was about to say, it was called chapters. So um, the first chapter or two, I, I don't think I fully comprehend of like, oh, we are really just getting thrown into this story. So yeah. uh, this is not like I'm getting a big setup here. Um, so once I kind of got the hang of it in general, actually rather enjoyed it. I did definitely misunderstand some things uh, that I caught later. Um, at like four or five chapters in, or in one case, it was what, like 14 chapters in, Stephen? Um, I don't think you're alone. Okay, good. Yeah. So don't feel bad at okay, all. Okay, good. Um, I kept calling Stephen today when I was finishing up the last couple chapters, and I was like, I think I understand this, but can you give me a second opinion here? You called me at one point and went, so is she is she sleeping with her sister? And I was like, she doesn't have a sister. No, no, no. Here, Okay. Here's, here's the thing. I got for half a second. I wasn't paying. I, I got lost in it. And I went to you. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Yeah. Tuya. Yeah. Tuya. Mm-hmm. Well, I, if I would have thought about it, it would have made perfect sense because she's the only daughter. Um, duh. Right. But for whatever reason, the very beginning before I really understood the story, I thought they were sisters um, because I thought she kind of looked a little bit younger in the initial picture I saw. So I was like, oh, so this is like an older sister, younger sister thing. And um, and I didn't really see Tia that much more. She talked about it. Um, and then all of a sudden I went, whoa, why is she making out with Tuya? And uh, and I went and I called immediately said, this is her <laughs> girlfriend, isn't it? This isn't a sister. Nah, that's oh, comic really, books, baby. I really misunderstood <laughs> stuff. But once I got that figured out, I think I understood. <laughs> you think you understood it? Okay, good. That's that's a lot better than most people. Oh, yeah. Well, it's truly because they really just throw you in here, which I, I, I do really enjoy a lot of times. Because yeah. mm-hmm. I think like a lot of you know TV shows or movies, they really want to make sure that like they're spoon feeding you everything. They're like, okay new environment here let's go ahead and give you the entire background of the universe before you step in and they yeah. were like no here here what? you go you're gonna get yeah. it right now but it's very like if you made game of thrones very east asian with animal people yeah i could see that yeah have you read this before steven or is this your first read through so i had only read the first issue uh mm-hmm. when it first came out which is i mean the first issue is like what 60 pages 70 pages yeah it's, like it's a, pretty big it's a it's a big boy but i had only read that and i like i enjoyed it but i never really picked it back up and as uh maddie and chris know already uh there was the unfortunate circumstance of uh the the current quarantining situation mm-hmm. and maybe i dealt with anxiety maybe that's what our last podcast is about mental health and maybe i have bad anxiety and maybe when i have bad anxiety i spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars every day i get another message to, from steven yeah he's like i did it again yeah he's bought another book i spent like fifteen thousand dollars on a credit card that i don't have <laughs> upgrading all my like floppies and paperbacks into like omnibus hey so, now yeah, so I had a problem. Uh, I still do. And thanks to Maddie, that problem now extends to manga. So thank you. Um, but yeah, I, I had picked up the book because I was like, oh, I'll keep going with it. Um, so I actually hadn't read it uh, more than just the first issue um, until this. And I had feelings. <laughs> I see that uh, lonely place of dying behind your head. You just moved nope, your head. Nope. Nope. Yeah, I love that. I, I love that issue. Tim Drake's yeah. my Tim Drake's my Robin. So, uh, Dick Grayson is my favorite character in comics, but Tim Drake mm-hmm. is probably my favorite Robin. Weirdly enough, no, I feel um, the same way. I, I like yeah. Dick Grayson as Nightwing, but 
Tim Drake is is Robin to me. Yeah. Sorry, I just no, I get thrown cool. off when I see cool things like that. It's the um, only two CGC books I have. That and Saga number three is somewhere back there. I also yeah. understand these important references because <laughs> <laughs> you've been with uh, Stephen for a while. Uh, I, I've heard I've heard some of these phrases before, but uh, it might as well be in a different language to me. Otherwise, <laughs> but yeah. now I've got I got an in. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm I'm glad that we're talking about specifically this opposed to just comics in general because then i would not be able to contribute as much but <laughs> i feel like i actually formed quite a bit of thoughts oh, that's related to this in general so yeah that's well, good. And now that you've read this you can always just throw that into a conversation that's and true if, if they ask about other comics you just deflect yeah you just talk more about monstrous you've got this forever <laughs> uh this is a pivotal piece of work so i would prefer to focus on this and stay in this area if that's cool with you um <laughs> there's only, there's 500 plus pages that we can talk about so what was your favorite page seven or page 137 <laughs> maddie had you read this before um i or? had read like half of it mm -hmm. and then um i read it right before the show today yeah finally you're good um, at that. Wait, you read the whole thing? Yeah. She's really good at that. Before the show? Yeah. What time did you start? When I finished work today. <laughs> she's a pretty fast reader. That's an understatement. She's a fast wow. Reader. Wow. It, it doesn't help with reading comprehension, though. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, but yeah, because I, I, I picked it up before because I had the first couple of volumes. And then when this um, got announced, the special edition, I just pre-ordered it. And I was like, well... I'll give my trades away and I'll just read it like this, which I'm glad because I think it's really nice. It's just a nice addition. Um, yeah, this is my first time. So I didn't really have a lot of like introduction to this at all. Just that, you know, everyone rated it so highly. And I, I really liked it. Like, I mean, I have some issues because I feel like it was a lot. <laughs> Although I, I, you know, I'm curious or if, if you feel different or have read it a second time. Um, Cause I feel like, if I read it again, I'll like it more because I'll have more mm. awareness going in from the beginning. Um, but I really like the art. I like the characters. I love the diversity in everything throughout here, like a lot. Not just with like race, but also just body type. That's true. Amongst everyone. Like even the background, I just felt like so much diversity through this that I don't see anywhere. Uh -huh. And they didn't have to. They could have just never done it and she still would have won awards for this. Yeah. So um, I read. I had the first trade paperback, and I read the first couple of issues. So I have a love hate relationship with this book, with this title, um, because it's one of those books that, I mean, Jesus Christ! You look at the back and you see all the awards it won, right? Mm -hmm. So automatically you're like, oh, this has got to be amazing. Um, when I first got the first trade paperback, I don't think it had won anything except for maybe a couple of uh, awards, but everybody was talking about it. And just talking about how great it was. And the only thing I had read of, uh, is it Marjorie? Is that how you say her name? Marjorie yeah. Lou? Was uh, her Astonishing X-Men run. And that was okay. You know, there were some good moments. And then there were some not great moments. But it's always difficult to write X-Men. So I don't really judge a writer on how well their X-Men run is. Uh, but I was a huge fan of Sonata Takeda. The whole entire reason I kept reading Brian Reed's Miss Marvel title was because of her artwork. So... Uh, going into it, it reminded me a lot of what Jonathan Hickman does, which is just I, I love when writers do this, right? Like what Maddie was saying. They don't think the audience is uh, idiot. They're, they don't think their audience are a bunch of idiots, right? They figure you're just as smart as they are. You'll figure it out. They just throw you in the middle of this world with no explanation. Now, he does things a little bit different. He deconstructs and then the overall art comes together and you're like, oh, Damn, okay, that's what's... East to West, for example, right? Uh, well, he's a plot dumber, too. I don't know about that. Uh, I think this here, though, when she throws you in there, you don't get those moments of, oh, that's what's going on, at least to me, and this is my second read-through, until much later. Mm -hmm. And I think... And I, as much as I love Takeda's artwork, there were so many characters that looked the same towards the beginning of the story that I was so lost. I'm like, wait, is this the little girl at the beginning? Or is this her mom? Is she having a flashback? Then you just asking myself those questions. Yeah. All um, the witches kind of looked like Micah. And so I was really confused. 
Yeah. That makes, gosh, that makes me feel so much better. Well, I that's, what, that's where I'm going that with that, Chris. <laughs> okay. Don't feel don't feel alone. It is it is confusing. Yeah, it's a no, lot. I, I and, feel you because I was like, okay, do they are supposed to look similar, and then maybe they're related? Is that actually her mom? Is her mom not dead? Is she part? Oh you know, yeah. That's where I'm, I'm convinced going. that all the Inquisitrixes were the same person, just they kept costume changing. Like, because yeah. <laughs> they all looked the same to me. Like, un- until the mask came off, and then obviously right. she had the scary monster face. But, spoilers. Which, I mean, what a dope name for a group, though. Oh, oh yeah. I like, I like all the names in this. Mm-hmm. But, I think this, this read-through, I was like, well, let's give it some time. Because it reads, you know what it reads like? Um... So the plot feels a lot like the way Jonathan Hickman writes, right? But the dialogue, oh my god, this feels like reading a Conan story from uh, Roy Thomas. Like, I don't, I can't think of another modern comic these these days that has, like, this much dialogue uh, through fight scenes. And then when you get to the explanation, I just want to show you all this panel right here. (laughs) <laughs> like this is in every at the end of every issue yes. um, as of issue two, right? Which is wonderful. This kind of gives you an idea of the world that she's building and, and things like that, which is great. But when I look at this, mm-hmm. I, I don't know, man. I'm just like, oh my god, that's 15 word like word balloons. Why is there so many word I balloons? I skipped yeah. every one of those. Oh, you skipped. Uh, <laughs> See, I think oh, that's what my brother would do with caption uh, boxes yeah. when he was little, right? And I always made fun of him. I'm like, how are you learning anything if you're skipping the caption? But so I sat down and I read these. See, and that, they're, that's and they're, not and they're made good. for this. <laughs> it's not made for right here. Brain. There, oh, were, okay. there were many times, because I, I told you, Maddie, when I first hopped on, I was like, if I had to read one more goddamn lecture by Tam Tam, uh, <laughs> I'm going to be right? <laughs> done. But at the same time, I appreciate the world building and the information oh, yeah. I'm getting. But also, like, I kind of preferred the ones where it was like a piece of propaganda or something, because I got the information yeah, cool. without <laughs> having to, to read. read a novel. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh. I love yeah. those. Mm-hmm. I, I those actually really nice. Like the one, uh, yeah, the first propaganda one we got about like, uh, you know, how to pick out like the ar- the arcan arcanus. Also, mm. this format of it or over here was mm-hmm. less daunting to me than yes. the word bubbles. Same here. Yeah. So like yeah. when that popped up, I was like, oh, this isn't going to be so bad. But when I saw those word bubble pages, like you were just showing, oh my god, like. Oh my- <laughs> Well, I remember looking at the kittens that are paying attention. I'm like, bullshit. No cat would pay that much attention to somebody talking for that long. And, well, my point was, I wish that she had done that maybe at the beginning. I think it would have helped a little bit with uh, trying to see where she was going. Because it's Mm. a lot. Because So, back to uh, Takeda's artwork. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Uh, But sometimes I would get lost in it when when there were fights. And yes. oh, I can't remember where the panel. There's a couple uh, pages I had to use in, as examples, and it just seems really chaotic. I guess that's the only way I can describe the fight sequence because I don't know who's who. Like towards the beginning, I'm like, who's this? Okay, who's this yep. lady with glasses? Mm-hmm. What witch is she? Is are they witches? Mm-hmm. Are they half demon, half human? Um, so that was. You know, the, I, I wish that maybe she had explained it at first. And I'm, I am always make fun of my co-host on Omnibros. I'm like, I like smart comics. Or, or I like reading smart comics. But uh, sometimes I think it's okay to dumb it down a little bit, maybe. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I just felt really um, thrown in there and, and lost. And honestly, if it wasn't for Takeda's artwork, I think, I, again, I would have stopped about halfway through volume one and been like, eh, not today. Maybe when I have more time to dedicate yeah. to something like this. Well, I was going to say it was... Go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, but don't let that stop you from reading this because it does get better and mm-hmm. you get yeah. used to it and you get, start to finally developing feelings and attachments to these characters that you oh, don't yeah. really care about in that first, no, in that first um, I guess, yeah. uh, graphic novel, the first uh, trade paperback. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the one thing I was going to say about the whole Tam Tam <laughs> lectures uh, that was... It, it was funny. I mean, it was a little bit more doable because when I would first go to that page, uh, I would also be overwhelmed. But when I was doing like the guided view on the, because I was using the electronic version, it made it more manageable. But, uh, but I definitely agree with you, MR, to where I, I felt this weird tear of, uh, how much of this is just cause I'm new and not getting this and how much of it is just being thrown so far in, I can both respect, but also like when these Tam Tam things were coming, it was so much information 
and they were and it was helpful mm-hmm. but there were times where i almost felt like i was starving for it earlier like yeah. it, but to be able to understand more of it through opposed to at the end i read it and go oh i think i understand what i just experienced now so that was the only thing that for me that was a little difficult it i i i feel the same way though if it makes you feel better chris you know me and yes. i love i love my comics and i love being thrown into a world like you mentioned east of mm-hmm. west i love east of west phenomenal yeah. series and when I first started reading it, I had that moment of like, okay, what the hell's going on? Um, but once yeah. I kind of grasped it, I was like, oh, this is phenomenal. Okay, cool. I like the characters. I like where we're going. Um, I feel like I, not to the same degree, but like something like Saga or Lazarus does that where it explains a little, but it takes a few issues. Mm-hmm. But this, like, I I mean, yeah, they were getting off the ship and going into the mist before I was like, oh, okay, I'm in. I'm engaged. Right. Like once that like bone fairy man came out, yeah, of the, yeah. came out of the water. I was like, well, I'm in now. I <laughs> Yeah. Totally. It's definitely a, a slow, <laughs> not a slow I, burn, but it takes a while. Um, yeah. Real quick. Freddie mentioned, sorry. I hate that it covers half of you guys' faces. Um, remember Marjorie also writes prose. Um, I was like, well, that makes a lot of sense. Mm. Cause it, it is well, very word heavy. But I think I, um, Neil sorry. Gaiman does the same thing. I think it depends on the way that it's done. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the that's delivered. I don't think she played to her artist. That's what it was. She doesn't. She didn't utilize Takeda to Takeda's strengths, which is mm. drawing beautiful layouts and um, sequential art. Because there's so much dialogue that you kind of miss some of that action. Like, <sighs> damn it. I, maybe I'm spoiled by manga like Berserk, but and that's when I see why action, you thought now, of it too, because you're you know you're also looking at an artist that's very manga style right you know what yeah and, I and, think and it's hard to see that kind of style with a american amount of dialogue yeah you look at that in, cover in manga it's very much your expressions the art's going to speak for itself you know you you are to interpret that mm-hmm. right yeah versus i mean western comics from a back come from a background of let me over describe this thing that i'm doing and it's gotten better but it still is from that origin mm-hmm. so and it is a different match of things I think that's what happened. Maybe my brain, and maybe I'm not alone, looks at the cover and be like, oh, this is going to be a fast, easy read. Well, I was just <laughs> reading, uh, I was rereading The Fade Out the other day. Mm-hmm. And so going from that, where it's pretty minimal dialogue and or description per panel of the art, because they really focus on, you know, his art. Yeah. All of a sudden, I'm going to this, and I'm sitting there going, okay, the only other person I can think of that wrote this densely in a book in modern times it's like when kevin smith did his run on like oh. and he's a he's a movie writer so like panels the art's like this big and the writing's like this much snyder even to an extent like scott but, snyder got real wordy for a while but with art um, writers like that i think you can recognize you know you it, it plays to your to to you right like so it's like you recognize right. terms with this when you're world building there are terms being used left and right that you're like wait what are we again she's she's half dog she's half wolf is that her name? I didn't even know yeah. her damn name was Half Wolf until like I think the third or fourth issue. I'm like, oh, I thought that was just the nickname they were using for her. Mm. That's her name. Got it. Um, so yeah. I do want to move the conversation on to things that we that you did like about it. Um, so just talking about, I know a lot of us t- said that we kind of fell into it, got more into it as we kind of got halfway through. Um, were there any particular like characters or like? arcs that you went through or like worlds that you went through as in like scenery that you really enjoyed mm. well i'm team kippa all the way <laughs> you know <laughs> you know it, honestly it might just be because i'm a softy and this is my first one but kippa was the only one for me that i felt from the very it, i mean you could probably argue a lot of times it's helpful for a character to have conflict in order to be able to grow and and develop. And there's probably not as much with Kippa as there is with other ones, but I still, I couldn't help it. Every time I saw Kippa, it was like, man, this thing is like, like I love Kippa redeeming all the other shitheads half the time. Um, And so that I would say, I I love that. And I also, uh, Stephen had given me a heads up on this, uh, but I really liked this, this representation of a completely matriarchal world. Uh, yes. And it was, it was just kind of cool to be able to, sometimes you don't recognize something's a different concept and new until you see it and just be like, Oh yeah, that's the fact that this feels so new to me uh, proves the point that you don't see it that often. And so um, mm-hmm. 
yeah, I really enjoyed that. I thought it was, it was a whole different spin on things. And I wanted to, I want, almost want to see a movie version of that, even though God, I can't think of the effects that it would take. Well, no, I, I think this is good. If they ever make a TV show of this, this is going to translate so well, maybe even better than comic book form. Mm-hmm. I think you, you get, they get I agree. a lot to work with. And I think HBO could pick this up. It could be the new game of Thrones. Like no question. I mean, right. you yep. probably have to throw more sex in there for it, but sure. I think it's sure. going to do really well. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I, so I will say, yeah, Chris, I agree. It's, it does feel kind of like the, Oh, you like Kippa, the like sweet, innocent, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, like if, Kippa is ever harmed, I will burn everything sure. to the ground. Oh, yeah. Like I fell in love with her little like innocent sweet character and I loved her very much. Um I also was willing to burn everything to the ground for the cat by the mm-hmm. end. Uh not at first. Sure. I was ready to burn the cat to the ground. Necomancer. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I oof, no, I was ride or die with Kippa. I understand. Um also the bone man, of course. Yeah, bone man is <laughs> Mm-hmm. My favorite character, apparently. Um, no, I, I I also liked the the matriarchal stuff and like seeing that society displayed, like a society how opposite ours, where you know one of the things that you throw into, and it's a word I use all the time, trust me, but like the term motherfucker, which is like almost oh, yeah. a slam at mothers and you. Like they didn't use that in this. They use the term fatherfucker a lot. And I loved it. And yeah, that's and my new fucker. insult. I was surprised by that too. <laughs> yeah, I was like, sister fucker. I was like, really I just anyone. Right? Does it mean something I didn't understand? <laughs> that's all right. Chris was trying to figure out sister brother. Like what is, <laughs> what's the difference between a sister brother and a brother sister? And like, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that threw me off quite a bit. Um, but I pretty much, but we're still talking about things that we like. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I uh, like those things. <laughs> yeah. I, no, I was, I was trying to think what else that oh, I man. really, I didn't like Bone Man as much. Wow. And okay, is this might be a hot take. Um here was my here was my reason that I didn't like Bone Man. I felt like they made him like a stupid character, like in this literally like IQ wise because it, like every single time it's like perfect, you give me the bone and then you just grab another bone and he's like, "Oh no, you tricked me. <laughs> now I must follow your rules." <laughs> like I sat there I was like, "This guy seems like he could kick anybody's ass." <laughs> like it, f- like that was the one thing where I felt like he seems smarter than this, but that was my only thing about it. I, I have more respect for bone man than what I, that, that's yeah. why I feel this way. The As way you, you just described bone man makes me like him more. <laughs> no, I just wish <laughs> you he was really hard into that. <laughs> Oh yeah, no. Oh, I see him no. as a character of comedy. Bone man, where he's you like, yeah. from oh. Bone Man. Now Bone Man. Fa- I just, no, yeah, I that. boiled again. Yeah. Um, I'm with I really Steven. Liked, I like Bone Man. Um, right. He looked. The art for him was like, kidding. Like it was yeah, gorgeous. Was cool. I, I yeah. liked Monster Arm Man. <laughs> Zen? The demon. Yeah. Zen. I really liked Zen. Um, like, at, not at the be- I don't care about the beginning, but later on, like, I really like this relationship that he and Micah have a lot. Yeah. I know I've watched anime like this before. Mm. I, this has got to be a trope from anime I've seen before. Parasite. Um, yeah, Parasite. Mm. Because I, I don't know, I, I'm excited to see how they inevitably grow closer and become friends. Because not the Oscar winner movie, by happens. the way. <laughs> the that's anime. That's what happens to these all the time. Like, yeah. you have an evil old god monster in you, right? That that was in love with your, like, great-great-great-great-grandma or something. And you're just going to become family in a weird way. And that's yeah. what I want to happen. This. And, and this, this may sound like a critique, but I, this is not how I mean that. Um, it, it's interesting how it, it seems pretty quickly. Uh, Kryn, is that is that the demon's name? Is that right? Zen. 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 That, there Zen. we go. Um, I was mixing it up with a different name. Um, uh, Zen, I feel like, makes a pretty big switch of being like, you know, I'm, I'm just hungry. Like, I, I'm this demon to, oh my gosh, maybe am I, did I do something wrong? Like, having this level of introspection, which I, th- it's not a criticism, but it kind of reminded me similar. Of, I was kind of surprised how quick it happened, similar to in Game of Thrones, how the famous Daenerys situation of just being like, "Whoa, yeah. you, you like, like you were you had a lot of emotional growth very quickly," um, <laughs> but uh, but it was still cool. It, it was nice. It it felt more enjoyable of saying, "Okay, they have a relationship," opposed to this thing just annoying the shit out of this girl, and she's <laughs> she's gonna do whatever right. she can to get rid of it. 
And I look forward to seeing wherever that goes, because I know this mm-hmm. is this is only the first deluxe. I don't know how long this is going to be. This mm. seems like a huge epic that I, I assume it's going to take a while to get through. But yeah. um, I'm excited to see how that unlocks as they like find more pieces of the mask and whatever. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to find it, but I can't. There's essentially one part, you know, I'm going to make up what she says. But that relationship I also liked because it's... <laughs> At first, I was like, I'm not going to like this book because I just don't like this weird, like, I'm taking over. Rah. But then as they went on, there's one point, I don't even know what she says. She's just like, we're going to go in here. And he basically responds with like, me, 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 me. <laughs> and I liked it. He just mocks her. And I I also fell in love with that little dynamic. And she needs that, too, because I'm excited to see her grow a little more because she's very much like, I mean, understandably. Yeah. Sure. Her mother died. She had to grow up in like a camp. And she has a to demon kill people. inside her demon inside of her that kills people. And she doesn't want to kill people. I get mm-hmm. it. So she should be very like, you know, hard. Right. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I'm really eager to see how she grows with this too. Cause I want to see more to her character than just like this, this anger too. Definitely. But I know that's that that's sure. something that'll develop as we go. Yeah. Also, I love how beautiful everyone is. Can we just talk about how beautiful everyone is? Everyone in here. Yeah. But minus, you know, monsters, I guess. But. Weirdly, and maybe this says something about me, but her goddess father, um, whose name I can't remember, uh, he's a tiger person. Siez or something. Oh, Dizzy yeah. Or something, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's a tiger person, and I would like him to take me in his arms. <laughs> uh, and just and just he feels like he sure. would be a very tender cuddler. It's um, like if Tony the Tiger was on, like, sexiest man alive or whatever it was like that's that's how i felt the whole time it was it, he was beautiful <laughs> i must have missed that show hey what it's can there. i say but yeah, i would it, watch it if so it was sweet. just like breakfast cereal characters i'd watch the mm-hmm. shit out of that mm-hmm. well i don't know if you ever watch D stuff but a, a podcast i watch and steven watches also um did a cap and crunch thing where they were all cereal characters <laughs> oh, nice! I think you last saw that. It's a line. good one. It's very good. Gosh. I think uh, she always delivers. She's a phenomenal artist. You know, it, it's weird because this book is like uh, what the, <laughs> I don't know how to describe her art in this. Except, are you you guys? I know Maddie is, but are you guys gamers like video game? Mm-hmm. Okay, so it reminds me of like the fogginess of Shadow of the Colossus. Mm. And on mm-hmm. the PlayStation Two, where it had to cheat a little bit, and because of the, you know, the right. like how much graphics you can actually put on that system, oh, yeah. uh, like mixed with like Cthulhu and Junji Ito, and I don't know, maybe what's his name, uh, Geiger, the guy that did uh, Alien, oh, yeah, like yeah. the artwork, like especially with the goddess or the gods, but it's freaking awesome. I love it. I love the character designs. And, but I think that was one of my biggest issues was there were so many characters. That's why I got confused at first. But by the time, like both of you, I, I really liked the, uh, uh, what's her names? Uh, Kippa and uh, Master Ren. Master Ren, that was the name. Mm-hmm. Where they have characters like this in Berserk, and I always hate characters like this in Berserk. I'm like, ah. Okay. Yeah, like, like the, in, in Berserk, they have a little fairy named Puck, and he's kind of like the comic relief because, you know, the entire world is going to hell. And something yeah. very similar is happening in this book. But for some reason, it works here. Maybe because mm. I didn't like Micah at first. Like, I just was like, I was really annoyed with her character. Yeah. yeah she because she was other than angry girl, other right? characters to help mm-hmm. you get through it because she's rough. Yeah. yeah. So I looked forward to Kippa. And a little Kippa that's yeah. just like, don't kill me, but I'll keep following you. And she's like, what are you doing? Are you seriously? I almost ate you and you're going to keep hanging yeah. out? Yeah. Now, damn it, this leaves, of course, on a cliffhanger with where the hell did Kippa go? Right, because we don't know what Kippa's about either. Let, I will burn me, everything to the ground. <laughs> well, let me tell you this. I mean, and this is just, this is the perfect example of a complete comic newbie like myself. Mm-hmm. I had forgotten that this is called book one. And so I was very upset <laughs> when it, I was like, no. I thought I would get the ending. And That's and nope. I I mean this is just a classic rookie mistake of I, I just read it and I went hold on we're leaving it on this note and then I called Stephen and he's like it, it's probably going to be a while before it all, it all comes out and I was just super livid but that's at the same time that's a good writer that makes you want more yeah that's true I mean at the very I least, love that you like, keep calling him 
Oh, I, yeah. You left keep and calling right. Stephen? Left and right. Yep. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> it's, it's, that's the relationship we have. He's done that for years. That's uh, wonderful. I like to verbally either. process things. I get that. Uh, not just books either. Just everything, just everything. in life. It's there true. have been some interesting phone calls. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was calling him what, like every ten minutes. <laughs> I would finish like another chapter and say, "Hold on, I need to break down before." Oh, I- yeah, yeah. No, I'm on vacation this week from work, and I like my phone would just buzz, and Katie would be like, "Is that Chris again?" I was like, "Yeah." She's like, "Aren't you supposed to be like trying to relax and stuff?" I was like, "Yeah, but I want hey, to help him process this book." Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to bond with you over your love for comics, so I just need. It- I need I've been some help. trying for years. And what's Let funny in, is Steven. you mm-hmm. jumped in for this, mm-hmm. but you wouldn't jump in for like when I was like, you have to read this book. It's super accessible. It's called Saga. <laughs> it might be the best fucking thing like being written. And you were just like, oh, no, it doesn't sound great. <laughs> well, it was it was all connected to me with I met Maddie and I was like, she's cool. Yeah, of course, I'll do this for Maddie. And that's what it came down to. It's it almost became more fun to do it for a different reason. Well, glad I just wanted wedding. to hang out with you both again. So now I now I can. Good. Good. Yeah. Well, now you uh, now you can read anything. <laughs> I think if you've read this, I think you're gonna be fine. There's that no is reason. true. Like this is probably one of the biggest. I don't know. Maybe not Little Bird. Mm. Man, Maybe next year you'll be ready for Little Bird. You <laughs> but, guys, I, I didn't realize there was a glossary in the back of this. That would have been very yeah. helpful. <laughs> that would have been awesome in the front. Wait, a glossary? Oh, yeah, you've I have blown a Chris's glossary mind. glossary back here. Yeah, it explains. Oh, man. You see the problem? All the characters well, they have. Well, and that would have been so impossible in the in the digital version I was reading. Yeah, oh, there's my no gosh. way to go back and forth, right? Man, yeah. gosh, that would have been awesome. I wish. Man, I do, I do appreciate they have cats. <laughs> well, you gotta laugh. know. Mm-hmm. There's more to cats than just being cats, but just it does make me laugh. Sure, so, I know. Well, they are brutal and awesome. I love them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cats are scary. Well, I, I, I've, I've like told y'all this for a long time. Monster hunter. <laughs> so I kept Cat- thinking I've seen those cats. Yeah. Cats in real life are scary. Cats in this <laughs> universe are scary. I don't. I don't do cats. Bold stance. I feel like multiple people uh, or characters in this story remind me of different Pokemon. Um, and, and I couldn't help it. Uh, well, I mean, Master Ren, Ninetales, uh, um, I thought that Kippa reminded me a little bit of Jigglypuff just from the I would look. have said Eevee. Eevee, yeah. Uh, pr- that's a better one. That's, yeah. And then, um, the monster, uh, Zen or whatever, mm-hmm. I, 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 you've already told me and I forgot again. Um, uh, do you remember, Zen. do you remember Tangula? Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's a total tank. Yeah. Omar, you're yeah. Omar's I didn't play. No I didn't play him. Pokemon. That's hey, like that's okay. Gen One though. That's like yeah, original t- 150. Yeah, Tangula looks like a small like if you added four colons together, um, but just dark, like like almost like black licorice. But I think yeah, I that's know a what, weird way of describing it. But yeah, I, mean, I think I know basically what looks mean. like the monster. <laughs> the monster. Did you? If you added four what? Colons. Colons. I can see mm-hmm. that. Like a digestive. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That I'm just making sure esophagus. that's where we were going. I will guy. say that when you said colons, I was thinking like. Oh. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one makes sense. And then I, no. I still shook my head like, yeah. 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 Colon. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's it. just dots. I got I'm it. Cool. Yeah. That's a tangela. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Man. god. Um. So this is usually the part of the show where we said we say what we rate it as, um, out of ten. <laughs> Um, and those are all yeah. arbitrary. It's not research. Sure. It's, and I hope that no one ever makes like a composite list of what I've rated things because I don't think they always really. Yeah, never take Maddie's advice because she'll tell you, "Hey, you should read this guy named Junji Ito." Okay, you listen. Sh- <laughs> I, it's not. You read the book that I hadn't read yet, and it was bad. <laughs> it's so bad. There's a bad Junji Ito book. Have you read No Longer Human yet? Omar? Well, I love the original No Longer Human. Oh, well, then you, oh, so no, you I don't like it. I don't know why. Then it's it's the one about the guy um in, like suicide, right? Like the guy that wrote Sexual it committed abuse? suicide at So, okay, so the original book was like the guy wrote it and then he committed suicide. So it was published after he died. Oh, and what? then and then the manga came out, which was 
I think three of them. And then Junji Ito, for some reason, redid the manga. Uh, I know it's it was dark. It's it was dark. Up. And I just... And you know what? I love... You know what? I love sex as much as any red-blooded human being. <laughs> mm-hmm. But good lord. I was just like, I can't... What's happening in the story? Because everybody, everybody be sexing all the time. And, and I basically <laughs> sold Junji Ito to Steven. Mm-hmm. as like, hey, you know, a lot of Japanese horror... <laughs> You yeah, know, we talk about uh, his writers, lack of fan service. Mangaka, you know, um, even like horror uh, film directors, right, do a lot of sexual horror in there, and Junji Ito does it. So it's very like, you know, it's just it's very different. It's very cool. And then he picks up this book, and I haven't read it yet. And he also bought for me my birthday. Thank you. And man, <laughs> that's the first one he's read. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I've got. I've got what's on my show. I got Uzumaki and Tomie up there. Please, I got, I'll get to it. Uzumaki next. Those are good. Those are solid. And then whatever collections Brian, are over here. Wrong. I say that in, in the nicest way possible. Um, um, Hayden, it keeps telling people in the chat not to take my advice because okay, you bought that on your own, Hayden. You can't put that on me. I told you that that book was bad. Ooh, what is I assume it? this is a Buffy book or an yeah. angel book. Angel season 11 library edition. It's not good. <laughs> but I have to collect all the Buffy books, so I don't have it. What do you I, do? I get it. I have the Chuck Austin X-Men collection. Yeah. So I can't judge anybody. Oh, yeah. Rating it. <laughs> yeah. I, I give it. <laughs> um, I give it a seven. I think there's a lot in here. I still want to read it again. And like Chris said, like regardless. Out of 10, by the way? Yeah, out of 10. Okay, good. That's just helpful for me to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, regardless, I'm I still, I'm going to absolutely pick up the next book when it comes out. I've got to know how it ends. I've got to yeah. know where this is going. And I still think that if this ever became a TV show, it would just win all the Emmys. Honestly. Mm. Well, I can go quick if you yeah. want me to. Yeah. It's the best comic I've ever read, uh, which is not <laughs> hard to say. Um, that should if, be a blurb on the back. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> but if if I'm giving it like a rating out of 10, um, I am actually agree very much with you, Maddie, on the fact that uh, I think I, I would probably do like a seven as well, mostly out of the fact of I think that, uh, Omar, something you said earlier was a really great point of some of the probably the best part about this book is the art. And at many times the art gets kind of blocked uh, because of other aspects. And that's, I would be very interested in seeing a slightly different variation or the TV version of this to where like the art and the artistic aspect could really shine. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it was, it was good. It was, I very much enjoyed reading it um, when I wasn't confused, but I wasn't confused that much. I mean, it sounds like I was as confused as y'all were, which makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah. So that's my writing. I like that. Uh, I, uh, similar to Maddie, just based on everything, I'll pick up the next book. I mean, I'm gonna. It's beautiful to look at. It look, look at, I mean, just even look at the book. It's not as pretty as Maddie's version, but like, even just the book itself, it's got a nice feel. That's important. Um, I mean, I'll put it on my shelf. Like, I, I will read it. I kind of want to know what happens next. Like I, I'm invested. Bone guy got me. Now I'm in. Uh, mm-hmm. I give it also seven out of ten demon tentacles. Um, <laughs> of where I'm sitting. So okay. yeah. How many cattails out of guy. ten cattails? Yeah. How many? How many cattails? Oh, that's different. That's a different. It depends system. on how many cattails a cat can have. I don't know. We there, maybe we haven't seen the final. It varies on this, huh? <laughs> yeah, one like of them had like ten tails. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I'm just like, whoa. You know why you like uh, the Bone Man? Probably the same reason I do. It's like, um, it's almost like coming home, right? Like you're reading this book and you're so fucking lost, and then when you see the Fairy Man, you're like, oh, I know that guy. Mm. <laughs> I, I know this story. He'll yeah. take you to the to the underworld. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's why. Like that as might soon as that it. happened, I was like, Jesus. Yes, I recognize something. All right. A sense of familiarity is really nice. Yeah. Like, something about the way he shaped him. Like, I'm trying to remember. I'll have to figure it out. He reminded me of some sort of monster from a horror film. And I'm going to have to remember what it is. But uh, talk amongst yourselves because I, I have okay. no clue. Okay. Um, I 
like I said, I, I, I think uh, if it wasn't for Takeda's artwork, I would have stopped reading it again about halfway through the first graphic novel and until I could sit down and give it the time. And uh, yeah, I think six and a half. Six and a half is, is, is good. Because I finished it, I ended up liking uh, the characters yeah. a lot more, and I want to know more, and I'll, I'll get the second book. Yeah. That's so pretty this, good. This is surprising to me, actually. I, I, I guess just because... I didn't know anything going in and I saw all the different awards and things. This was, I, I, I assumed that maybe I was going to be the one that maybe just didn't get it quite as much and thought mm-hmm. it was enjoyable, but maybe I just didn't understand the brilliance in the same way that other people did. But, it, um, but it's interesting. I mean, is this, is this a, are what we're saying those ratings controversial or is that pretty on par with what you've seen for, I mean, it seems kind of similar with well, what's going on in the chat. The the award because yeah the chat is is very much like divided across yeah. the board. It, so it won a bunch of Eisners and Hugo. Yeah, the and, Eisners is like mm-hmm. our co- that's like the comic book award. That's yeah. like the the Oscars. So sometimes yeah. they get sure. a little snooty. Like I think this year, mm. I don't think the big two won anything. <laughs> like it was really that's independent. All books. my favorite books won. Well, um. Uh, I am yeah. going to say, though, Something is Killing the Children got robbed for Best New Series. I was, I was upset Chip Zdarsky didn't win for Life Story. I was I was kind of heartbroken uh, yeah. by that. But, I mean, I liked... Uh, what, what ended up winning? Was it Invisible... No, I like Invisible Kingdom. Invisible Kingdom's great. Yeah, I love it. No, it was Little Bird. And I was like, I like that book, but I can't imagine so like too many people liking it because it reads like a European comic. And, um, Chris, that's a lot more dense than this is yeah it's pretty to look at but man it's mm. um it's kind of rough to get through if you, well, sure. if you want have... another dense comic chris read watchmen okay because uh, <laughs> that is hard to get through it's no, wonderful but I, it's oh, yeah. watchmen is awesome though i would like, not put that on chris either. i figured it out by the way y'all um what? what'd you figure why out? i like the bone man it's his it's his dialogue okay because uh he refers to himself multiple times when she takes the bone as my precious self um, which I enjoy, but also uh, he says, yes, yes, now the bone, which is my line in the bedroom. So oh, I think mm. that's why I like really it. Sure. Like, sure. Yes, yes, now the bone. Mm-hmm. It's very good. Sure. That makes sense. Um, so one question I have for all of you, and okay, Maddie, yeah. Omar, I'm taking over unintentionally. So the moment I need to shut up, you tell me. Nope, um, I'm just, I'm trying to think of a couple random questions that I had throughout. Uh, tell me if I'm, I, I, I felt like as I was reading this, I was both trying to comprehend as my first one, but also I knew I was reading with people who've been reading for a long time and are like, I don't know, are there comic experts? In my mind, all three of you are, but I, that's not really saying much in my comparison. Um, but uh, so I was sitting there just trying to like read everything and say, I was wondering I wasn't missing things, but I don't know if it was overthinking certain things. So tell me if this is dumb. I think this might be dumb. The, the whole eye aspect, like the imagery, especially that final monster, um, Mm -hmm. the sky with whatever, what exactly is she killing it with herself? Like herself as a ray gun pretty much. You understand what I'm getting at? You talking about the battle in the third book? At the yeah, end, towards right? the very end, the big, yeah. the big. Uh, did, when she she make a she make a shoot shoot with the the laser cannon. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I know what you're yeah, talking you, about. You know, what I'm saying. Was was there? Do you think there was any intention with this being very heavily matriarchal, like that being a big, that the the goddess kind of looks like a vagina, and I'm not sure. trying to just for the sake of making like a, a stupid joke. But like I was wondering, yep. and I was tr- again, I was trying to think of just saying, is there is there potentially nope. any truth? That, like, are there hidden Easter eggs like that? Um, like hidden vaginas? Oh man, well, <laughs> you're asking me, Chris. What I'm, what I'm saying is, in every comic, is there a family vagina? friendly show? Chris? <laughs> is there a rosebud in every comic? Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, you're blowing my mind. I hope that it is. You know, I just, I, I, hey, I had to come with one deeper, um, like thought. And that was that was what it was, and I, I couldn't help but wonder if that's if there was some type of imagery there or not. But and, really and when the cool big cannon was. shoots into the big vagina, oh, yeah. is that where you're going with that? Maybe I didn't think this all the way through. But Philip says, <laughs> <laughs> Philip 
Philip says they were not that hidden. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Philip. It's fair. They're they're all over the place. I appreciate that. Maybe it's because of Lovecraft. That I was like, yeah, sure. That's a yeah. Cthulhu-looking thing. Whatever. Everything's Cthulhu. Everything looks like now. a vagina or a penis. I'm just gonna say it is yeah. from Everything looked like tentacles or hair to me. I couldn't tell her hair from her tentacles half the time. And and but, tell me this: am am I asking for too much in a fantasy world where because I I know <laughs> you have to give some type of like artistic license of just saying hey. You got to just trust what the artist is saying. But was anyone else upset by the fact that almost all of the mask, like specifically the, the big mask, like the mask that they were doing, as well as the guy or all the people that were being tortured on the island bones or bone island or whatever, there were no eye holes. I was <laughs> like, that was a really small thing. But as a, someone brand new, I kept going. I was like, wait, how are people looking through these masks? Now, not like the ones that the little uh the, or the goddess or the inquisitrix what, yeah, yeah 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 not those but specifically i kept i don't know just just me i kept finding myself being frustrated and saying hold on i shouldn't be this upset but i was also upset of saying you can't see that's not a mask that's literally just a <laughs> that's a piece of metal over your face but i was also at the same time this is a world where there's cats talking with nine tails and there's swords and guns simultaneously being used which in my mind why use a sword if there's a gun <laughs> um, as someone who plays a lot of japanese rpg like video games uh-huh. this just feels par for the course honestly because mm, i feel okay. like it's just like oh high fantasy well, sure. why don't you wear an alluring mask on your face but one that's sure. through your eyes but also yeah. you can't see through mm-hmm I feel like they're just like, no, this is sexy. We're going to do it like this. I mean, that's one of the things I noticed about Invisible Kingdom when I was reading it. I'm like, hey, why can't anybody see through those masks that all the nuns wear? My wife asked the same thing. And <laughs> I'm like, you know what? Stop. Like, okay. It happens. <laughs> okay, lady, you're sitting here doing research on a computer, but you can't see through your mask. Like, no, thank you. Okay. Like, so that must a be a newbie thing. As a cosplayer, I feel like I run into characters like this all the time. You're like, oh, shit. How am I going to make this work for me? Who's going to yeah. lead me around a convention while I'm cosplaying this stupid character? Yeah, like, exactly. That's these are, these are very deep questions, Chris. I'm, I don't. Mm, I guess thank you. I'm not as smart as I thought I was. I don't <laughs> or, look for hidden vaginas or eye holes on masks all the time. Well, you know, maybe uh, because I grew up with superheroes that don't even have pupils in their mask, that, right? That like Spider-Man or Wolverine. I just assume people can see all the time. Yeah, huh. man, yeah. you're blowing my mind. I'm done reading comics. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. In a way, aren't we all blind? That's it. I'm just slowly <laughs> making this a philosophical. <laughs> Are we all blind? Isn't everything? <laughs> oh God! Isn't it all just some sort of euphemism or metaphor for yeah. life? Yeah. You know, it. This book really reminded me, if nothing else, of the never-ending march of time. That's true, Philip. And how. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to go the never running story route. I was like, all right. Let's no, 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 no. Um, I can't. We don't talk about that movie. Oh, is it because of the horse? It's because of the horse. Oh, yeah. God. I thought you were going to say you found a tray um, hot until you realized totally well, it wasn't a chick. No. How far are you <laughs> in the game that we're both playing right now? Um, You shut your mouth. Am I going to lose Nobu? Shut the fuck up. Don't tell. Did you name your horse the same name I did? Nobu? Yeah. Oh, that's really great. No, he's fine. Maddie, I will I will come through this screen. No, I was at talking right about now. The Last of Us. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I finished it. Okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I was gonna I was gonna attack you if you're like, yeah, Nobu gone. Also, if oh. you're not playing Ghost of Tsushima, you should. Everybody should be playing Ghost Very of Tsushima. Very good. I it's... can't believe you named your horse Nobu too. What color of course. is he? It, it, did you pick the white horse? Yeah, I did. Of course you did. Yeah, see, because you're a good person, friends. just like me. Twinsies. Anyways, guys, thank you for coming to our show. No, I'm not <laughs> done yet, folks. <laughs> Welcome to my TED Talk on PS4 exclusives. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> before we have you guys leave, we chill, chill with some extra questions and stuff. Um, yeah. So, what do you guys like besides besides comics and stuff? I feel like if we ask more comic questions, it'll be isolating for one of you, so... That, that's okay. I mean, if this is a comic show, so it's only fair. And if anything, I can like I can listen to and write down other things to look at as well. So, whichever works for me. Um, well, hey, I'll give you something that is not uh, comic book related, but it is. It's not fantasy. It's sci-fi related. Um, if you have Amazon Prime, watch Upload. 
It's oh really, God, yes. really freaking good. Um, it's Omar, you would love it. Not often, like no question. not often do you get original ideas anymore. Um, and there's a lot of things similar to where, I mean, Black Mirror does this. A lot of things where they're trying to take. Who did of, upload? Um, uh, uh, the, what did they make? Oh, the showrunner uh, for The Office, and um, a lot of other stuff too. Um, Parks and Rec, right? Parks and yeah. Rec in The Office. But it's, yeah, it's, and King of the Hill, and he did Space Force on Netflix, the new it's, one. I mean, seriously, Upload is is really really good. I did not expect to like it that much, and it uh, it's it's just a really interesting take on a lot of times when you have it's set in uh, 2033 and so a lot of times when it's set like that uh you almost get like the overly <laughs> intense uh everything's flying cars and every um it, it's it's a very interesting approach to how they do it so watch that i can't you know i can't say that enough it's so good i haven't I seen really it yet love it mm-hmm. it's, I'm, I'm- it's very like oh man it's the it's it's all like the san junipero episode of, of black oh. mirror where like if you die you can upload your consciousness mm. to like this yeah channel. but it's a comedy sci-fi yeah. version of that man i was talking to my wife about that and she was just like nah i don't want to live in eternity with you i was like cool thanks greg daniels thank you green lantern that's who it was <laughs> greg daniels mm. gotcha okay also i have two different people calling me out for not shopping live today actually i am i can do it if you need Steven, no. No, you can't. I forgot where uh, the damn Wonder Woman omnibus came out today. Which one? The War of the Gods. I don't need it. I have George Perez's third volume. It's the same thing. It's in there, but I'm an idiot. Um, Roberto, we're talking about uh, Upload, but that is a similar sort of pre- uh, premise. I'm going to watch that because it has uh, Angelica from Hamilton in it. So, wait, wait. Oh, rugrats? Shit, no, right. altered carbon. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Man, I've been watching so many stuff where I'm like, I'm like, motion to my husband, like, look, 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 it's Bird. Mm-hmm. Look, it's Leslie mm-hmm. Jr. Uh, so glad they're in everything. And then I heard that uh, David Diggs is in the new uh, Snowpiercer TV show. Wow. Which I love oh, yeah. the movie. I'm a big fan of the comic book. So. Oh, is that good? I mean, you yeah. you're a fan of it. So um,. The first one was, but then the author passed away, and then like ten years later, they wrote like two and three where they're well. Never mind. I don't want to spoil what happens at the end of the movie, uh, but it takes place like after the first movie. And oh, wait, uh, is it Col- who's in the he's who's on the TV show? Beside was it Jennifer Conley or is she in the original? Oh, I don't know. Is it Emma? No, it's not Emma Thompson. She was in the movie, right? Um. <laughs> Oh man, I, I know it's somebody that I really like, and I can't remember if it was Jennifer Conley was in there or not. Jennifer Conley, it looks like, yeah. Oh, good. I love Jennifer Conley. Um, so, Stephen, what have you been reading? Uh, On your vacation, no, um, have you been reading, or are you? Oh, just all I've been Ghost doing is reading. Okay. Uh, I have not. No, I'm. That, tomorrow is my first day where I don't have any like commitments at all, so I will probably sit down and. Okay, go pretty good, hard at I, Ghost of Tsushima. I need you to catch up. I need you to tell me when you get to the third part of the island, please. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm still on the second part, but that's because I go around the first part and do all the little locations and yeah. stuff because I'm weird. Um, no, no, what I've have I been reading? Uh, I am going back through Jason Aaron's Star Wars omnibus because I love Jason Aaron's Star Wars. Um, I'm taking the mic. I'm going over here. What have I been reading? <laughs> uh, like Take I said, I just finished rereading the fade out. Um, which is wonderful. I mean, yeah, I really we enjoy it. We did that two yeah. years ago, I think, on Old Reader, New Reader. It's so good. It's one of my one of my preferred of the. And not that you can really prefer. I mean, any right. bird maker stuff when he does with. Oh my god, it's so good. Um, I've been reading that. I'm reading Moonshine currently by Azarello. It's good. Um, which is a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. And Farmhand. Uh, oh, good choices. Finally catching up on that. Oh, and Maddie, I'll, I'll do what I told you about already. Okay. I really like, if nobody's reading Crowded, I really like this book. I'm going to um, read it just for you. That's the whole plan. You should. Like, I understand it looks like it's going to be like bubblegum, happy go lucky, like whatever, because it does have like a pop bubblegum art. It's essentially like 
very happy looking and it's a hilarious book but it's also like a really good commentary on like people's obsession with like smartphones and apps um and if you haven't read it it's all about like an app called reaper that people basically put up kickstarters for people to murder you um and then there's another kickstarter or there's another corporation that's like uber but for um bodyguards called defender um and this one girl she doesn't know why and no one knows why has a million dollar basically kickstarter on her head and you have 30 days to kill that person or else they're given immunity and they can never have a contract out on them again so it's about her trying to survive and this bodyguard who's very good at her job but takes no shit basically being very frustrated with her and it's it's funny but also like really exciting and good so what's it um, called again it's called crowded Okay. Um, you're all uh, welcome people in the chat uh, i bought crowded just now so yes you should uh and That's if you don't like it I'm very sorry. while we were doing the show it's it's worth a read uh even if it's like on hoopla or something like you don't want to spend money on it just yeah do that but you just did buy it so score but yeah i don't um, have hoopla so we don't have it in my city which is ridiculous oh yeah no it's i read a lot of stuff on there too yeah, if you so can believe Kristen. it, based on how much I've bought, but it's um, <laughs> Elliot, crowded. Who, some books. who writes crowded? Uh, I think it's Christopher husband. Sabella. Um, yes, so it's Christopher Sabella. Uh, this is the second trade, but can you show me some of that artwork? Yeah, I can. It's uh, so it's like this very. Hold on, let me. There you go. It's like this very pop art um mm-hmm. trying See, to flip through that. and find some of the like more fun ridiculous oh, man. uh that makes panels. me want to recommend uh snock to you if you can read that on hoopla uh, a lot of stuff like that uh when you're doing screens and uh <laughs> i won't put that page up because i don't want to get y'all's video removed um but yeah just a lot of like it looks very fun bubble gummy um one of the description on the back i can't remember where it was but essentially like it's um like a pop art um something i can't remember what it was it wasn't on the back of this one but who's the publisher uh it's image book okay yep uh and i think it's like image with skyward and all that but i'm not sure if it's skyward or not i mean i don't read anything image like uh, yeah i mean it's it's worth a go um Ryan Reynolds apparently reads it. Kieran Gillen signed off on it, so you know it's good. Ryan Reynolds reads it. Yeah, he's like one of the Gillen? blurbs in the back. I do like Kieran Gillen. Yeah, I, do too. Uh, I know some people find him pretentious, but I mean... Oh, no, are you kidding? Ryan Ryan Morrison, Divine is one of the best <laughs> indie comics of, like, my lifetime, I feel Felix, like. Felix said it was uh, greenlit for a movie, and that Rebel Wilson is cast as the main character for credit. Is that real? I don't know, but I would watch that movie in a second. Are you trolling me, Felix? Are you not a fan of Rebel Wilson? Me? No, I like her. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I like her. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that's that's real. But I mean, I I'll watch news it for two years. It was two years ago. Oh, uh, then maybe not. It's I because I was gonna say I thought that it was optioned for something originally. Like, I just hope they keep it as. I don't know because part of what I enjoy is like yes, it's this fun looking book and it looks all like. It looks almost kid friendly in its art style, but it's so drastically violent. <laughs> um, kind of like I hate Fairyland. Um, oh yeah, I like but, that book. Wait, yeah. you're talking about Rebel Wilson, right? Not Maddie. Oh right? my god, Elliot. I me. No, no, we're talking about Rebel Wilson. I feel the same way. She's a little much at times. So, although she was awesome, and what the hell was it that I watched last week? Pitch Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Was it Howard the Duck? It was just randomly thrown in there. It was one of the... Uh, oh, Fantastic Four. Was it Fantastic Four? Whatever the hell Amanda and I did last Wednesday. She was Fan in that Horse movie. Dick? No, the original 2003 oh. movie. Weird. Yeah, she was just like uh, randomly... Th- Ghost Rider. She was in Ghost Rider. That's what it was. Oh, yeah. Ghost she was, like, Rider. She was being, like, somebody oh, was interviewing her. What a flashback. Yeah. Wait, did I already say movie. this? I think I already said the story on the show. Never mind. Um, that Which my one? friend, my friend showed me Ghost Rider. Like, let's watch it as a joke on Netflix to get it. Like, through Netflix party that extension. I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, sure, that'd be great. Um, now, spoiler alert, I guess for like the beginning of the movie, but uh, Nicholas Cage's dad is like a stunt 
drive around a motorcycle or whatever. And I was like, oh, shit, he's going to die, right? And like, yeah. And I sit there, I'm like, did, did you guys realize this hits really close to home? Like, no. I was like, no, my dad literally died on a motorcycle. <laughs> I was like, this is really great. This is things to watch. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for yeah. that. That's dark humor. I'm cool, it. you guys. There's, there's been a couple people who are, like, I don't know if they're asking what Ghost Rider is. I see questions. But basically, all you need to know is Nicolas Cage, motorcycle, skull with head. Firing skull. Uh, uh, f- fire head skull. And uh, Sam, what's his... What's the cowboy, the famous cowboy who's like Sam an Elliot. Sam Elliott, who has yeah. a beard that goes that's, no okay. goat. That the scene right there. That yeah. Because uh, we you, reviewed Ghost Rider last oh. week. I can show you some worse ones. It's rough. Oh, Omar, Maddie, would, I appreciate would you agree with me that, that his beard, Sam Elliott, I've never seen a beard closer to a person's eyes. Like, it's, it's not like here. <laughs> like, go back and watch it. <laughs> that's the main thing I remember about that movie was just over and over thinking, like, that seems dangerous. Like, I'm concerned yeah. for you. So that's what you need to know. Yeah. Maddie, I appreciate your blue humor. I know you Very do. much. Just because, yeah, I was going to say, just because we had a, a friend that I've not seen in probably 10 years come over and have dinner on opposite sides of our, like, yard from us because of the world we live in. Uh, and he was like, yeah, so how's everybody doing? Like, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, I mean, my parents, this, my parents, he's like, Stephen, how old are your parents now? And I was like, oh, well, my mom's like 65. My dad's dead in the ground. So, and the look on his face, he felt so bad and kept apologizing. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. We good. Like, I, it was, it was a dark joke. I'm very sorry. Mm-hmm. Stephen and I have bonded a lot on that kind of humor since. Dead dad club. It's very, uh, yeah. it's very difficult to know who can take that well, though, and who doesn't. Oh right? yeah, like, no. you... it just comes out of me, and I go like, "Oh no!" Oops. And, and but Sorry. you'll find out really quickly after you make that joke <laughs> who does and who can't handle it. Yeah. We found out on our show a lot on I'm our sure. last show where That's I would true. say something, and they were like, uh Oh, I didn't mean to. And I was like, oh, no, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I've made hey, our guest very uncomfortable. Off, do you guys want to do like talk really quick about your new podcast and like what what's the premise and what you both be like, nah, nah, I don't nah, that. nah, we, we don't do anything good. Um, sure. So the sure. elevator pitch, uh, I guess, for our new show is everybody has done something in their life that is, you know, cringeworthy, awkward, embarrassing. Uh, We scour the internet and we use listener submitted stories and we break those stories down. And then based on their suffering, we do improvised comedy scenes. So uh, it's a lot of improv kind of in the vein of like, if you know, Hey Riddle Riddle, um, which is a podcast done by Adler Fi from um, Hello from the Magic Tavern. Um, who was on our first episode, actually. Um, stuff like that. So if you like improv uh, and you like hearing about people's misery uh, and how horrible, 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 embarrassing things can happen to everyone, uh, check it out. It's it's fun. We enjoy it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's definitely just like enjoyable, especially with everything going on. To so Everyone, you hate to do it, but everyone loves a like a video where someone falls down you know you can't help it you know there's just there's something within you in the same type of way it can be really enjoyable sometimes just to hear about other people's embarrassing stories because everyone knows that deep pain you know Mm -hmm. and can really resonate together so it's just a fun way of thinking about that stuff yeah it's a a fun little thing we do three million listeners can be wrong that's not we don't have three million I think if we added up all of our listens from our show from the last like 2.9 years combined, Mm -hmm. we Mm -hmm. might hit three, but I don't know. (laughs) Probably not. Hey, that's awesome though. Right. I listened today and it was, it was great. It was it's, great. I, did, I love listening you. to embarrassing stories and already I was like, shit, if I had an embarrassing story, what would I, what would I tell? Yeah. You should. Uh-huh. So good. Should What's the name of the podcast again? Oh, <laughs> the redo. I didn't say. It's called the redo. Okay. Um, yeah, and if you it's... guys enjoy Chris and Steven, even though they, they do have a new podcast, I really hope you check it out. They also were, they just finished up um, their last podcast, Is This Adulting, with like 150 episodes, which is incredible. And it's great. It's mental health and comedy thrown in. So I think right now, that's always a great thing. Either of those. Just like, you know, a great thing to connect with. Because we all have a lot of time to think about those things and deal with them anyways. So we, we, the truth. we made the funnies. We played games. We had a lot of... Uh, a lot of fun guests. Only one from the comics industry, but and I, I'm on the I'm on one of them. Oh, and then you. You're also in the yeah. comics industry now. So, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, unless you count the McRoy brothers, do we count them now? 
since they wrote yeah, all their uh, first second novels. Well, yeah, and and uh, uh, Clint wrote uh, a Miss Marvel. Well, actually, oh, oh yeah, and, um, and Captain Marvel crossover. And uh, it was a War of the Realms book. Griffin, yeah, Griffin and Clint together wrote that War of the Realms book. Well, okay, I guess they're comics and, in the you know, future. The Adventure Zone. I need to get over to read them because. Man, I think they're great. I don't care if you read, like, listen to the podcast or oh. anything. I think the comic's hilarious. The comic's really good. Well, I may um, or may not have a half sleeve dedicated to that podcast, so Elliot everybody check that out. Elliot gives the redo. Oh wow, time. cool! Thank you so much, Elliot. Thanks, Elliot. Elliot is. <laughs> Chris is like, oh, who's this random Elliot? That's my husband. You you saw him bring me a drink once. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Um, it's very nice to see you again, Elliot. Hayden says, "I already fell in love with uh, Stephen on Fangirls, and now I fall in love with Chris." <laughs> Maddie, stop having awesome guests. I know. I, I'm I one of the girls now. Them. I'm very excited. It's true. <laughs> I've talked to Kristen because Maddie's kind of done with me. That is um, not true. But we I, hang out pretty frequently. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, I talked to Kristen and kind of weaseled my way onto at least another one soon. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, what now you have to say? join for. I think we're doing Star Wars by Jason Aaron next month. I need yeah, to talk I think to that's Kristen. the one. She controls my schedule now. So that and one of the other ones. Like there were two next month that I was like, you know what, Kristen. I'll just be one of the girls. Let's do it. Absolutely. Of course. Speaking of schedules, I guess we need to talk about what we're talking about next week and next month. Um, and I was going to suggest something really quick. Oh, do I need to switch it up? I made the, the ad. You already did it? You didn't well, put yeah, it up, though, it up. did you? Um, okay, so number one, the She-Hulk omnibus that we had on there. Let's yeah. wait on the, until that one comes back into print. Because it's out of print right now, and I don't want to be like, hey, we have this book and you don't. Um, yeah. It'll be back, I think, in September anyway, so I think we'll be fine. Okay. Uh, I was going to suggest maybe start doing some of the Eisner winners. So if you haven't read, like, Invisible Kingdom, or um, if you want to tackle Little Bird, I mean, you're more than – we could do, we can do that. I, I I've read should, it already. should be my second comic, shouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's yeah, really it should. hard. Or how about Bitter Bitter Root? I've been pushing that comic book I on this channel. That book. Okay, how about we do that instead of She Hulk? Sure. We start. We do Upgrade Soul. She uh, Bitter Root. I need San to do a. We need to do like a, a an actual video on um, the Eisner Award winners, anyways. Yeah, I, I thought about that, but I don't know how long. Uh, yeah, I've, I've 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 wanted to read that too, but I think she wants to do Upgrade Soul first. That's fair. I, I bought it because she told me to. I'm just giving my suggestions over <laughs> here. It's like and crowded. No, I have not read crowded, so well, it's I bought it. It's on the way, so. Um, and then I, I suggested Sandman, but let me see. So what does that? What does that give us? But the we Sandman, are, absolute Sandman. We are doing upgrade soul, Kristen. So you should just be on the show when we do it. I'll tell you when it is. Uh, let me see. That's uh, let me look really quick at the. Upgrade soul is still my like. 5th, 12th, 19th, and 26th. So Most recommended book. I bought it. It just scares me. It's, a, it's so I intense. Mean, and then I read what it was about on the back, and it makes me sad. Why would you read what it's about? I it's remember she you. told me not to read what it's about. Well, the, it's on the back of the book. It doesn't <laughs> matter. Don't, don't read it. Wait, do you not watch a trailer before going and seeing the movie? Everything else, yes. But this is one <laughs> thing I'm like, no, don't look up anything. You just read it. In comics in general, or just this specific one? Just that specific comic. Okay. okay. I think sometimes in movies, uh, it pay, it pays yeah, off, right? Like yeah. I don't remember, I, feel I don't remember seeing Tusk a trailer from from Dust Till Smith. Dawn. Mm -hmm. I, I feel the Tusk opposite to a lot of people. <laughs> sure. Should I? No. No, you shouldn't. But I do. Oh God, no! That movie was horrible. I, I recommend. Went in, I went in blind. And I was very pleased. I recommend that episode of their podcast where they wrote Tusk as a joke two years before they yeah. released the movie, and they were like, "Oh my God, you can hear the evolution slowly of them being like, this is so stupid, huh? To like, we have to make this, uh, which I think is the eventual end of the road for Chris and I. We'll do that and end up <laughs> making a film <laughs> based on one sure. of our scenes. Mm -hmm. I support that. So, do you want to do Upgrade Soul for next week? Sure. So, um, so we know what to Kristen, tell people. Kristen, can you tell us in the chat right now if you're available next Tuesday? And then we can wrap it up after after you tell me. Even though I could just text you right now. No, it's more fun sure. to do it publicly, though. <laughs> Why wouldn't you do that? Try not to watch trailers. Yeah, they get to be too much, especially those DC trailers. I remember somebody like Frankensteining yeah. all the Superman Men of Steel trailers. It was like 12 minutes long. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I, f I definitely feel complicated about trailers because it's something where 
especially in this day and age, there's so much content yeah. out there. It, you kind of want to say, I'd rather give three minutes real fast to see if I want to give the full time. But then sometimes when you watch trailers, it's becoming more and more the case. It's like ruining parts of the movie oh, yeah. and, or the show. So it's, it's kind of like a catch 22. Yeah. Ellie and I watch trailers all the time. Cause I like to just take my time and just give my options ready first for, for my movie night. And mm. sometimes you watch one, you're like, Nope, I saw the movie now. So I'm good. Yeah. I don't have to watch this. I uh I I miss watching trailers for the first time at like in movie theaters. Yeah. Sometimes I hate the internet because I can't wait, right? Because everybody's already talking about the new Avengers trailer, mm-hmm. and I'm like, well, I guess I'll watch it. So. Yeah. Um. So yeah, why don't we do um, upgrade so for next? Anything, so okay. Yeah. That way we know we let our listeners know what what to read, and I need to order it. It's 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 a trade, right? Yeah, but um. It might not be too late to get the uh, Humble Bundle for that as well. Mm. What is this digital you speak of? <laughs> it's a great Humble Bundle. Bitterroot's on there. There's a, It's on the Humble Bundle with a lot of other black art, uh, writers and artists. So, I've, um, got, I've got Bitterroot. I've got okay. that one. But I'll, let me see if it's how much how long it'll take to get here. Uh, so if we're for sure doing it next week, then I'll go ahead yeah. and get it. So right. everybody heard that. Upgrade. I'll, I'll so. wrap it up. <laughs> um. Thanks again to Chris and Steven for, for joining us. And thanks to the chat for being here. As as always, you guys are awesome. And I just enjoy spending my Tuesdays chilling with you guys. And like this video. Comment down below if you're checking us out later to let us know what you thought about Monstrous. Um, and always we'll, we'll always take recommendations for future videos. I hope you hit subscribe if you haven't. And if you haven't, you're checking out, us out for the first time. That's awesome and very surprising. And you can support us through Patreon, which is how we decided on Monstrous this week. That was the Patreon vote. We also have a Redbubble if you feel like sporting some near mint swag in real life. Nice. Which if you do, that's pretty cool of you. Um, and we will be back next week uh, at 8 p.m. again for another Over Your New Reader. So thank you guys so much. Team Kippa.